U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan has postponed a recent proposed trip to Saudi Arabia. He was going to be there to clinch the American end of a potential Saudi-Israel deal. This was a big talking point for a number of years, but then the October 7th terror attack happened in Israel. And things have gone into a downward spiral between Tel Aviv and Riyadh since then. With the war in Gaza going on and the US presidential election just months away, White House officials admit that there is a very slim chance that they can pull off this historic peace agreement. The White House continues to work towards a US-Saudi defense treaty as well as American support for a Saudi civil nuclear program. US officials are hoping to reach a bilateral agreement with the Saudis and then possibly present it to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. But here's the catch. Netanyahu will then have to keep his end of the bargain, which would include committing a sustainable path towards a two-state solution, something that Netanyahu is loath to agree to. Netanyahu would then face a choice. If he agrees to the deal, then he could be part of a historic peace deal with Saudi Arabia. If he says no, he could be exposed as a rejectionist and stand to lose whatever little American support he still has left. So on Crux Decode, is a Saudi-Israel deal still possible? What are the chances that Netanyahu will actually back such a deal? And if he does, would that be the end of his right-wing coalition which is in power? And if he doesn't, will he risk losing the support of Israel's biggest ally, America, and end up losing power anyway? So American officials insist there has been a lot of progress in the talks between the United States and Saudi Arabia regarding their draft defense treaty. They want to have their side of the deal ready and then put it on the Israeli table. Israel will then be told, take it or leave it. Last week, US President Joe Biden made it clear that he still thinks that the Saudi-Israel mega deal is achievable. He feels it's relevant. And despite all the talks being derailed by the October 7 terrorist attack, and Israel's military operation in Gaza, Biden remains hopeful. He was speaking at a fundraiser in New York last week along with former presidents Clinton and Obama. Biden said that he had been working with the Saudis and that they are prepared to fully recognize Israel. Biden's statement essentially meant that the onus now is on Israel to recognize Saudi Arabia and to take this peace deal. Now, many in the White House think that the Saudi mega deal is a pipe dream they cite the war in Gaza. There's also Netanyahu's dependence on his radical right-wing coalition partners. And of course, on top of all of this, there is also US domestic politics in an election year. The Saudi side has made it clear that in order to move forward on normalization of ties with Israel, then the war in Gaza must end. But that's not all. The Israeli government must also commit to an irreversible path for a two-state solution. Netanyahu does not seem to be moving in either direction. He certainly does not want to end the war, and he cannot do so until the stated military objective, which is the total annihilation of Hamas, is achieved. But he also is opposed, tooth and nail, to a two-state solution. He even rejects the mere idea of allowing the Palestinian Authority, which controls the West Bank, to have some kind of a governing role in Gaza the day after the war. So even if a deal is reached, then the US Senate will have to ratify the defense agreement with Saudi Arabia and also the civil nuclear deal. This will be close to impossible in the current political climate in Washington. It's unclear if even enough Democrats are willing to support such a deal, a deal that will be seen as a win for both MBS as well as Netanyahu. And of course, Republicans will not let it happen either. Former President Donald Trump may intervene and stop the Republicans from giving Joe Biden a win just ahead of the election. He's done so most recently in the border deal case where he stopped Republicans in Congress from backing what was a bipartisan deal. And so to this end, Donald Trump's office has confirmed, in fact, they've revealed that he recently spoke with Saudi Arabia's crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman. This was their first publicly disclosed conversation since Trump left office back in 2021. It was also unclear what the two men discussed. 
Neither representatives for Mr. Trump nor any official from the Saudi government responded to this new development. But news of this supposed phone call, it comes at a very interesting and a very delicate time. The Biden administration is walking on a razor's edge in their negotiations with the Saudis. They want to establish a lasting peace in the Middle East, and that can only happen if this deal comes through between Tel Aviv and Riyadh. This is, in one sense, building on the diplomatic ties between Israel and a number of other Arab states, which was forged during the Trump years through the Abraham Accords. Israel had normalized ties with the UAE and Bahrain, and then eventually with Morocco and Sudan, and Trump, in fact, pushed them to do so when he was in office. If President Biden manages to clinch a trilateral mega deal, which would, of course, have to include a Saudi-Israel peace agreement, a Saudi-US defense treaty, and, of course, an Israeli commitment, explicitly so, to a two-state solution, then he will need support from two-thirds of US senators to ratify the deal. But Trump, who is the presumptive Republican nominee and who's firmly in command of his party, he could potentially roadblock any deal. He could red light it for congressional Republicans. And no congressional Republican who is up for re-election in this election cycle would want to rub Trump the wrong way. Trump has other reasons to maintain warm relations with Mohammed bin Salman as well. His son-in-law and former advisor in the White House, Jared Kushner, managed to establish close ties with the Crown Prince while he was in office. The Trumps have capitalized on that goodwill in their private businesses since they left government. Saudi Arabia was the very first country that Trump visited as president, a sign of the value that he placed on the relationship with Riyadh. Trump pursued major deals with the Saudis and included arms sales, energy deals. In fact, he was one of the only world leaders who defended Prince Mohammed bin Salman at his moment of greatest international pressure, which was after revelations that the Crown Prince had ordered the killing of dissident journalist Jamal Khashoggi back in 2018. For his part, Biden promised during the 2020 election campaign that he will treat Prince Mohammed as a pariah because of the killing of Khashoggi. Once in office, though, he realized that it is unsustainable and perhaps impossible to sideline the Saudi crown prince. Biden's team has sought to mend the fractured relationship. There was an awkward fist bump that happened the first time Biden visited Riyadh as president. But if either side, the Saudis or the Americans, were to pull off this deal, it will open a new chapter in the dynamics of the Middle East. The only problem is both Hamas and Netanyahu are standing in the way.